Okay, so to continue uh, with the uh, snap array sensor holders after we have finished the upper posterior teeth, upper premolars and molars, we will shift now to the uh, lower posterior teeth. And in the lower posterior teeth, basically, the whole procedure is repeated. Uh, the film or uh, the sensor placement is the same. All what you need to do is that you place your sensor so that it will be held tight by the uh, uh, by the uh, uh, by the bite block, as you can see in here, and then you just lock it in in place. Actually, you don't need to lock it very hard because it's it's very. <clears throat> thin one and it's very light so uh, all what you need is that it will not slip while you place it inside the uh, oral uh, cavity uh, just like we have done with the uh, uh, upper teeth we will start with the posterior teeth and the posterior teeth of course that you're going to flip the exposure side as we agreed it's always facing outwards towards the uh, thick part of the bite block so that it will uh, uh, it will exp uh, f face the X-ray always. You can see that uh, if it is uh, on the right, okay, on the right side. If it is on the left side, of course, you, uh, it has to be flipped the other way. It means that this this cannot be done nat naturally. So this can be done only for the for the right upper right and the upper left teeth. So you need just to flip so that this thick part is always extending out, uh, ext facing the x-ray beam. This part, the thick part, is always facing the x-ray beam. So, uh, again, uh, it's, uh, for me, I will just place it the other way around. See, I'll place it here so that I can work on the, uh, on the lower uh, right, uh, right side of the patient. And then I'm going to work on the premolar teeth. Again, I will ask my patient to open. And then I will place, I'm doing the premolars now. The ex exposure side is facing uh, x-ray beam. So I will place it in, in this way. See, I will, I will place it so that the two premolars, the two premolars will be in the middle of the film. And then I'll just place it there. Start, I don't place it here and then I, I ask the patient to buy it. This is, it will not always fit. So please put it on the premolars first and then you are going to ask your patient gently to close on the, on the, uh, on the biter block so that you will have this relationship. See, it, it follows the curvature of the arch and uh, from, from the back side it will take this shape so you will see that it is exactly between the tongue and the uh, uh, teeth and please don't mention the tongue to the patient just to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the patient will not be busy moving the tongue now so uh, this is how it how it goes it goes with the same curvature of the uh, of the lower teeth. Now we will come to the placement and the placement, as we agreed in the upper teeth, the this margin of the of the sensor uh, of the bite block should be falling within the outer rim of the uh, uh, of the uh, 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 X-ray tube. This will be concat definitely. This will be a concat. This will be a concat, and this will be. Uh, a concat. So you need to place it in uh, uh, in a way uh, so that it will uh, it will uh, uh, be with the outer margin. Next, you're going to move the cone so that it will be perpendicular or parallel with the buccal surface of teeth. Okay. Now you can give it a minus ten, minus ten, just to compare compensate for the. Uh, 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 tilting of the film so you can give it a minus 10 uh, as such and then you can give uh, you can make the exposure okay for the molar teeth you open wide and then you place the sensor so that it will be placed 
behind the second molar tooth and then you will ask the patient to bite on the sensor. So you will have this relationship. Okay? And from inside you will be having uh, uh, this relation of the, uh, of the sensor to the teeth. And the same procedure is repeated. One, you locate this outer margin. Second, you make it fall within the outer margin of the, of the rim. And then you direct your beam so that it will be perpendicular. You stand in front of your patient and you make it uh, uh, directed towards the uh, 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 buccal surface of teeth, perpendicular. If you come from this direction, you will be having a concut. If you come from this direction, you will be having, uh, sorry, you will, have, you will be having overlapping. But if you direct it perpendicular on the teeth, you will uh, uh, have separated contact margins. Suppose I am the patient, I'll just, uh, you make it, uh, uh, this is for the molar teeth. If, if I come from this direction, it's, a, it's an overlap. If I come from this direction, it's an overlap. So always make sure that your beam is perpendicular on the buccal surface of teeth or parallel to the cheek. This is for the premolars. This is an overlap. This will be an overlapping margins. Okay, and then preferably with this relationship, you can give it a minus 10. So that you will have the, just you just compensate for the uh, 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 movement of the, uh, of the, of the sensor uh, uh, in a, like it assumes an angle. Concutting results, if you don't make the uh, outer margin fall within the, uh, outer rim of the uh, <clears throat> of the cone uh, overlapping results if you don't make the beam perpendicular on the buccal surface uh, of teeth okay this increased uh, increased uh, 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 vertical angulation will lead definite shortening of the image decreased vertical angulation will lead to uh, elongation of the image. So what all what you need to do is give it a simple minus 10, minus 5 to minus 10 will be quite enough for uh, this type of uh, radiograph.